2 Corinthians 5, 14 through 17. For the love of Christ controls us, because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Hey, brothers and sisters, Pastor Michael here with a message of strength and hope from the Recovery Community Ministry, where we believe that God and recovery are real. Um, I want to read this verse, these two verses to you, which I believe is very, very powerful as it pertains to capturing our purpose. Uh, th this is what these verses says, and, and, and you've heard me read them on here before, and I'll continue to read them because I want to, to cement this into the hearts and into the minds of my brothers and sisters in, in this uh, larger recovery community. And, and so this is the, these are the verses. It's uh, Psalms 107, verse 1 through 2. It says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Has the Lord redeemed you? Then speak out. Tell others he has redeemed you from your enemies. I believe that that's a good word for somebody. If I didn't say nothing else, right, that would be enough. That's church right there. But since I got a few moments, I'm going to share uh, just a brief message with you about how uh, some of the things that we can do to, to capture our purpose and to learn to walk in our purpose. And, and I know, listen, I know I, I've been there. Um, I'm still there. Uh, there's some stuff that um, you and I may be holding on to that we're going to have to let die. Um, and I don't mean just let it go. Like these things are going to actually have to die in our life. We're going to have to allow these things to um, to die um, in order for us to get to our purpose, right? Um, there's some stuff that you and I think are important in our lives that we're going to have to let die, right? Purpose when we talk about capturing our purpose, when we talk about finding our purpose and walking into our purpose, we must understand that there are some sacrifices that are required. And until you and I are ready to make those sacrifices, purpose, recovery, and anything else in our life will be next to impossible or they'll be very unattainable for us. I remember um, a few years back uh, as I was going in and out of jail, um, for uh, selling drugs and for different um, other offenses. Uh, I, I remember um, going in and um, when I was in there, um, you know, I, I, I would tell myself, okay, Michael, you're going to do something different this time. This time, um, when you get out, uh, you, you're going to do the right thing. Um, and, and I remember having that, that thought process uh, up until the time it was time for me to get out. Um, and then as I began to, uh, to to go through the process of being released, there was always this sense of, you know what, maybe if you do it differently this time, you'll be able to relive those glory years, right? For many of us, there's this uh, urge or there's this desire to relive the glory years. There's this desire to get back to what we once were, right? Because for many of us, um, there was a season of our life where the things that we were doing were working for us. Uh, I remember there was a season in my life where the activity that I was engaged in was working for me. You know, I had uh, people who were celebrating me for the things that I was doing. There was people who loved to see me come around um, and you want to get back to that. But the problem is that once those days are gone, those days are gone and we need to let those days go. We need to let those glory days die in our lives so that we can truly grab hold of the real glory days and that are uh, is a life spent uh, in, in, in obedience and in the presence of Christ Jesus. And so um, question, you know, um, what are you holding on to right now uh, that you know you need to let die in your life? What are you holding on to right now that you need to let die in your life? Um, is it porn? Um, you know, like I said before, we say it all the time in, in this ministry, um, don't think that addiction is just 
uh, relegated to drugs and alcohol. There are so many addictions. There are so many strongholds that uh, that have that has us in bondage, and we need to realize that. And we need to address that. You know, and, and porn is, is a huge problem for most people, and and for many of us, a lot of our sexual activity uh, uh, is tied to whatever, you know, our vice was. So if it was drinking, if it was drugging, you know what I'm saying? A, a lot of times our, our sexual activity was tied to the drinking and drugging. If it was gambling um, or any uh, thing like that, you know, it, it's tied to the drinking and drugging. So they go hand in hand. So sometimes, you know, we say, okay, well, I'm not going to have sex, but I'm just going to watch porn, right? And we must understand that those things create a desire up in us. Those things create this, um, this, this 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 lust in us that that uh, potentially or or eventually or does uh, separate us from our relationship with Christ and from the purpose that He has for our life. So maybe for some of us, uh, we must let the porn or the addiction to porn die in our life. Uh, maybe it's cigarettes, right? We may think that cigarettes is is a subtle thing and it's not that big of a deal, but um, cigarettes they they do a damage to our health. You know, that, that's an addiction that many of us have, and it's one of the worst addictions that we can have. And so maybe uh, the addiction to cigarettes um, or that, that hold that cigarettes have on your life must die. Maybe it's resentment. Um, maybe there's this deep hurt or this deep pain and this, this unforgiveness that, that, that you're holding on to and that you need to let die in your life. Uh, resentment and, and unforgiveness builds this wall, this impenetrable wall that, that the Spirit of God can't, can't break through, you know. And, and until we're able to get to this point where we're able to let resentment die in our life and, and live with the spirit of forgiveness where we're able to know that we're forgiven, um, by God that we can forgive ourselves and that we can forgive others. And so we must let the resentment die in our lives. Maybe it's anger, right? Maybe we need to let anger die in our life. Maybe it's an ego, you know? Uh, um, maybe we think so highly of ourselves. The Bible tells us don't think too highly of yourself. And that means, that doesn't mean not to have uh, some self-confidence. And, and that doesn't mean to, um, you know, to, to, to be confident in who you are, but, uh, you know, that ego, that ego is, it's is a thin line. You know, once we cross that, that, that ego, we can edge God out. And so we don't want to get to a place where we're edging God out, but where we're exalting God only. Um, so maybe that ego has to die and maybe it's low self-esteem. And you say, well, pastor, how can you have an ego and low self-esteem? Uh, it's possible. You know, you can think so lowly of yourself in moments that uh, you wish you would die, but 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 still you're operating out of this ego at the same time. It's crazy. I don't know how we do it, but we do it, um, and, and it drives us nuts, you know. And so maybe we, in addition to letting the ego die, maybe we must let our low self-esteem die. And then the big one for many of us is pride and lust, right? We must let the pride die in our life. We must let the lust die in our life. And I know the list can go on and on. Um, there's some stuff that we're trying to hang on to that we just need to let die. Um, and I get it. I get it, right? We're addicts. Uh, we love misery. We love disappointment. Um, we love regret, right? We don't like to be accountable. We don't like responsibility. We don't like dependability. We don't like stability or any other ability operating in our life, right? We love to hold on to toxic things because they give us a reason to do what we love to do and to destroy our lives. The toxic things in our lives gives us a reason to destroy our lives. Um, uh, we continue to mess up. And, and when it's time to be accountable, many of us pull our addict cards out, right? Uh, many of us have our addict cards in our wallet and we pull them out um, whenever uh, the, the opportunity presents itself. We say, well, you know what? I'm an addict. What did you expect, right? Uh, you messed up again. Well, I'm an addict. What did you expect? Oh, you disappointed this person again. Well, I'm an addict. What did you expect? You know, at some point, right, we we um, we um have to let the addict in our life die so that the new self that has been made in the image of God can live. Uh, at some point, we're going to have to uh, take full surrender to achieve what God is asking us to do. Um, at some point, we're going to have to let the addict die. Um, and, and like I said, it's going to take full surrender to achieve this. Um, no negotiating, no compromising, right? I'm talking about full on surrender. Now, the problem many of us face, you know, you face it, I face it, um, you know, uh, is that many of us don't want to surrender, right? We, we want to negotiate the terms of our surrender. We want to, we want to hang in the hood 
and in wet places, but we don't want to get wet, right? We we need to let those wet places die. We we want to hang on to unhealthy relationships and force them to be healthy, but we need to let those unhealthy relationships die. We want to hold on to the past while embracing the future, right? So if, if I'm holding on to the past, if you're holding on to the past, it's impossible for us to grab hold of our future. And we must, we must let the past die. The Bible says, I I, I forget those things that are past, um, right? But I press forward towards what is in front of me. I'm paraphrasing. Um, and that that's not to say that the things in the past are completely wiped from my memory as if that's even possible. But I don't, I don't rest in the past. I don't stay stuck in the past. I keep moving forward. I let the past die now listen right i'm not saying that we'll be perfect if we do this uh we will never be perfect in this life you know that i know that so we don't focus on being perfect because we're only setting ourselves up for failure when we do that when we when we try to be perfect we set ourselves up for failure i remember when i um first committed my life to christ and, and um, i started to serve in ministry, um, I struggled a lot because I'm a perfectionist and um, I wanted everything to be perfect. And I thought that once I did this, right, that all of my imperfections would go away and it didn't. And it bothered me because I'm like, well, maybe there's something I'm not doing right. But once I realized and I came to accept the fact that I'm not perfect, but I strive for perfection, then my walk with Christ became a lot easier. Um, so we don't focus on the past. We focus on what's in front of us. We begin the process of dying um, to whatever the it is in our lives. There's a lot of it's that we're facing with, right? Um, like I said before, we must die so it, right? We, we must let it die so that we can live. And, and there's many it's in our lives. Uh, I don't know what your it's are. I know what mine's are. But whatever that it is that's keeping you from living and being the best version of yourself, I'm encouraging you to let that it died. Philippians 3, 12 through 14 says, I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I have already achieved perfection, but I press on to possess that perfection which for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. That's good preaching right there. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for uh, for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Man, Paul uh, Paul's a great writer. Um, I, I love this passage right here. This is one of my life passages uh, because it speaks to letting those it's die so that we can live and live how Christ has intended for us to live. And so what Paul is saying is he's saying, look, I know I'm not perfect and I know I have some work to do. He's saying that there's some still some it's in his life. Right. Um, and, and and he knows that in order for him to be who he needs to be, uh, that he's going to have to let these it's die. Uh, so what is keeping you from being the best version of yourself right now? What is keeping you from living your best life? There is this nature that we were born with and that we fed until it completely took control of our lives. And I'm here to tell you that until you and I are willing to let it die, we will never, never live. I'm not talking about existing because that's what many of us have been doing all these years. I'm, I'm talking about living and enjoying the fullness of God. I'm talking about being alive in the spirit and dead in the flesh. Uh, Romans 10, Romans 6, 10 through 12 says the death he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you too must count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you would obey its desires. That sin is the it in our life. We can't let that it, we can't let that sin reign in our lives. If we're going to live how God has intended for us to live, if we're going to live on purpose, with the purpose, and, and for a purpose, then we're going to have to let this sin, we're going to have to let these it's die in our life. Romans 7 and 6 says, but now having died to what bound us, we have been released from the law. 
so that we serve in the new way of the spirit and not in the old way of the written code. There's, there's something new happening in your life. Let the old way go and live this new way that God has intended for us to live. If, if you're watching this or if you're in a place of recovery, there's something new that has happened in your life. Behold, I'm doing a new thing in your life, right? That's what God is saying to us right now, that God is doing something new in our life. Let go of those old things. Let go of those old ways. Let go of those it's. Let them die so that you can live. I know it's been said repeatedly that once an addict, always an addict. But I want you to know that it's time for the addict to die so that you can live. It's time to take off the old self and put on the new self, right? When we look at this passage, Paul says he's not going to let the it stop him from being the best version of himself. He is going to die to the it's. He does not forget the it's, but he does not focus on the it's. He does not give the it's power over him. He does not live in the past with the it's, but instead he focuses on what's in front of him. He focuses on the process of reaching his purpose. He focuses on his goal, his new life. He focuses on letting the it's die so that he can live with Christ Jesus, Christ Jesus forever and eternity. What is your it or it's right that must die so that you can live? I want to encourage you to write, write these it's on a sheet of paper, write them on a sheet of paper and in a safe place. Now, in a safe place, take all of those it's that you wrote, put them in a can or something and just light them on fire and let that be the symbol of the it's dying in your life. Until next time, stay in recovery.